Hey guys, I am Dr. Kim Sage. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so glad you're here. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist who just loves to share my passion for helping people heal from wounds around childhood and relationships, attachment, complex trauma. These are really my specialties and passions, and this is also where my practice as a private practicing psychologist has really gone over many years, and so it really is a passion for me. I want to say that if you are watching these videos and you have borderline PD, or you love someone who does, please know that I always believe and want to share that this is a difficult disorder to struggle from. And also if you are younger, on the younger sort of channel here dynamic where you're like 35 and under and you have borderline, please know that this disorder is a more popular, not like popular, but more common, I should say, that's a better word, disorder that we know more about that historically speaking, myself included, so many of us who are older, were raised by parents, who would never say they had borderline, would deny it, didn't know what it was, and there were little, you know, little to no treatments available. Today we have a lot more treatment available. It's not always accessible or easy to get, or you know, not um, not cheap. I know that, but it does exist. We are seeing a lot of success for those with this disorder, and it's important that you know that. So when I talk about everything on my channel, I'm really talking about people who have this disorder who are untreated, undiagnosed, and for the most part, really unaware. I'm not talking or speaking to those of you who, when I talk about some of the research that can feel like I'm stigmatizing you when I talk about what untreated, highly clinical borderline parents can do to children, remember it's a highly clinical population, and remember that we're talking about, oftentimes, these were mothers who didn't know they had this disorder, not those of you who are working and in treatment and aware and, um, and on your own journey of healing. So please keep that in mind. I wanted to say also quickly that remember that borderline has a very wide and vast spectrum because we have nine different possible combinations and it requires five to make a diagnosis. It really can vary in how it presents. And we can have people who don't know they have it, who are in denial on one end, to those who are diagnosed and working on it, to those who are diagnosed and not working on it, to those who have no idea and would never sort of acknowledge it. And then we have, you know, as I'm saying, there's really high clinical population in treatment in programs where a lot of the research has also been done. It has very much been documented that those of us raised by borderline mothers who were presumably untreated, have a lifetime risk for increased psychiatric illness, anxiety, depression, complex trauma, school issues, attention issues, chronic mental and physical health issues, the list goes on and on. And so my goal is that because we understand and know now, there's a very strong link between borderline and genetics. In other words, the closer you are to the person who has it, the more likely you may be, though it does not mean if you have a parent with this disorder that you will. And we know that childhood trauma is really the source of so much of our struggle. And we know that men are underdiagnosed. I truly believe that so many people were raised by parents who, although borderline is not just a trauma disorder, oftentimes very much does develop and swirl and grow, especially if you have a combination of genetics loading it and the environment, but there very much is a trauma relationship in, in addition to genetics. And so it matters, right? And so we can often see generational trauma being perpetuated, especially if, you know, you developed it as a result of your own wounded childhood, but maybe there's a chance that your parent had it too, or someone close to you. So I want you to keep that in mind. Now, remember too that as we go through this list that the six types I'm gonna provide can play out differently for you as the adult child. It really also depends upon is the, you know, is the borderline parent, did they stay in a marriage? Did that parent enable their behaviors? Was there a divorce or separation? All of this really is important because what I believe and what I've seen in my own practice 
is that the more the child or children remain unresourced, in other words, there isn't someone to protect them, they were left alone with the mother, or everyone just said that's just how she is, so like the whole family just was like, well, she's crazy, which is not an okay way to describe borderline at all. My point is that it gets dismissed and, and sort of written off as something else when it really is a true mental health disorder in need of help. But because borderline has oftentimes this emotional and relational instability, the very essence is instability. It's not always bad though. That is the problem. You can have a very close, what feels like good relationship, but then also have a very unhealthy toxic relationship. And that trauma bond is often why I believe it is so hard for people to separate psychologically, set boundaries if they decide to go no contact. It's very difficult because especially with borderline parents, I believe because of their desire for relationship, we do get what feels like sometimes reciprocal love. Now it may be as the current favorite child, it may be as the only child, but the heart of it is sometimes we are loved in the good child and other times we're the bad, horrible child. And that splitting very common in both narcissism and borderline, but particularly common in borderline, where you're you know, idealized, you're the best ever, and you're devalued, that's what makes it hard. If a parent never sees you, is never good to you, is never emotionally present, it's a little easier to separate psychologically. It, it really is, because there's nothing left to hold on to. But that tether of the trauma bond is what makes these relationships I'm going to describe so difficult. So let's get into it. The first one is the trauma bonded, the active trauma bonded relationship. In this dynamic, what I believe we often see, and I see in my practice, is that the mother is very much in a very active state of borderline, undiagnosed, untreated, and very enmeshed with the child. And oftentimes when the child is like this too, and this is now a child meaning an adult child, this is a child who has no awareness of borderline, this is just how the mother is, and this child may or may not have their own borderline traits or diagnoses, but it's a very enmeshed, toxic, I love you this so much, you know, you're the worst parent ever. They both sort of lean into the trauma bond and neither one have any real awareness that that's how it is. Oftentimes the partner will be like, what are you doing with your mom? That's not okay. But there's just really no awareness of that relationship. That one is, like I'm saying, really defined by a lack of insight, often for both. The child might feel like this isn't right, but I love this person so much. There's often a very strong dependency that the borderline parent can create in the child as well. So that you might think, well, I want to leave them, but I, how can I live without them? You know, I hate them, I can't live without them. The second type of relationship is the trauma bonded, but trying to get out. This is where I often see that the adult child has become aware that this isn't okay, so they're not in the complete dark about it, but they really struggle with how to get out of it. So they might go no contact for a little while, they might set kind of extreme boundaries and then go back in with no boundaries. They're aware, but they're not yet at a place where they can really contain and hold that something has to shift in them as the child in order for things to be different. The third type of relationship is what I call away but guilty. And in this case, the adult child has often moved away from home, like literally created a physical barrier, but they're still feeling very guilty inside. And so they, they do have some contact, it's kind of minimal contact or very rare, or they might have contact with the other parent but not talk to the borderline parent except for on holidays. They dread seeing that, that borderline parent, they may have to see them sometimes, but they, they feel like this push-pull inside. They want to be away, they're glad they're away, they couldn't be there, but they're still carrying a lot of guilt and shame because they still feel like they're the bad child for leaving the parent, even though the kind of healthier part of them said, at least we're gonna get you out of there and reduce contact. The fourth type is what I call the boundaried relationship. And this can go either two ways. Either the borderline parent is, is starting to respond to some boundaries the adult child is setting and they're shifting, or they remain unaware, the borderline parent, but the adult child is implementing boundaries. And so it's kind of like, things don't necessarily get a whole lot better, but they don't get worse. And oftentimes this person who is holding the boundaries, they're often in therapy or beginning therapy, they're really understanding like, okay, I can't keep doing what I'm doing, but 
the challenge with this one is that it is a management issue. You are 100% the boss at managing the relationship with the borderline parent all of the time. So you're thinking about things like how you're gonna spend the holiday and over, you know, over what time period and how many hours. And, and you kind of, as I've created in my course, I'll actually I'll put a, a sheet up here to show you an example of my course and how to heal and deal with the trauma of borderline parents because I, I know and believe that it can be, is you have really set boundaries. And that's one of the parts of my course is teaching you how to get to boundaries if you decide to go no contact, but literally down to like every boundary. Will you let them watch your kids and under what circumstances? Will you not? Will you accept money from them? Will you not? So it's a very boundary relationship, but like I said, it really requires management. It can be manageable, especially if the borderline parent starts to respond in some ways, but really the onus is really on the adult child to keep the relationship. The fifth style or type is no contact, but the trauma bond lingers. And so what I've seen here is that the adult child has moved away, they're gone, they don't talk to the parent at all, but inside they are still weighted down with the trauma bonded dynamic they are still feeling very much like the bad child, very much oftentimes acting out wounds in their own relationships. And so they pull themselves away, but they're still psychologically often very much in that pain. There's often less chaos, and so that feels better. So they've done some self-protection there. But when we kind of crack it open, if we could kind of diagnose it and like, you know, open the hood, we would see there's still a lot of pain and a lot of shame and a lot of blame for themselves, even though they might know up here, like I had to leave and I'm, I'm good with no contact, they're still carrying the weight of it. And the last style I often see is no contact and also healing. And I would say healing because I believe you are always healing. Now that can really vary from beginning to understand the relationship and that it wasn't your fault as a child, you know, the truth is that you just don't get over completely. And in the beginning, when you first go no contact, if that's the route you go, you can feel very guilty and very terrible. But over time, people will say, well, I, I can't do that, I'll feel too guilty. But the guilt is so much less stressful when it pops up, especially if you're working on it in therapy or through books or support networks or your partner, than the constant chaos and feeling so upset all of the time. So I think that those are the six types I've seen. I do think that either the boundary and working on it, which is a lot of work, but often possible, especially if the person with borderline is not super wounding in their behavior, or the no contact and healing. But I would say all the other ones are still places where we see even more wound. You know, as I've said, I was raised by a parent with borderline and my other parent uh, who was no longer here, definitely had severe childhood trauma and traits of narcissism, borderline, and psychiatric illness. And I understand firsthand what this feels like. I really do. And that is why, though I'm not, you know, somebody who normally, I've just never been a really salesperson, I've been so passionate about creating this course on how to heal and deal with the trauma of these type of parents because I truly believe it's impactful. And while borderline and narcissism are different, we can often see up to 40% layering of both. We can see traits. They both have a lot of the same kind of defense mechanisms and coping mechanisms. A lot of the wounds in kids are, are, have some similarities and some differences. And in my course, I really do go through complex trauma, the ACEs studies and, and what your score is, looking at polyvagal theory, how to deal with your nervous system. I mean, it is just, it's a hundred pages of a workbook, you know, 74 lessons, videos, exercises, journal prompts. And then really I'm hoping to build and create a private online community for children of borderline and narcissistic parents. And so that's my goal. We'll see how that goes, but if you are, you know, if you were raised by a parent like this, I, I, I promise you, you will learn more than you could ever learn anywhere else because I have taken every resource possible on borderline and narcissistic parents, mothers who can't love, mother hunger, you name it. Along those lines, I also have a course called Remothered, Learning How to Become the Internalized Loving Mother to Your Wounded Child, and a free course on understanding how to identify childhood emotional abuse and neglect, which is a whole other issue with regard to neglect, actually even more common than emotional abuse. Very important to understand. And so we all know what it looks like. 
I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that you will know if this is you, that you are not alone and that there is a way to heal and work through it. I know it feels almost impossible to do. As I've said, I was in it for almost 50 years before I fully understood and accepted what it was because I was so deep in the trauma bond because none of us are wired to not love and want our parents. And the less resources you have, like I was, a single mom of four kids and no siblings and no close family, it made it so much harder. And I can remember so many times like in my head going, this is so messed up, but then also feeling this like, but how could I ever function without her? And so it's it's really painful, it's really difficult. And, um, and I know that. And so I hope that you will find whatever resources you can to know that you're not alone. And lastly, if you're watching this and you have this disorder, I, I, I want you to know, as I said in the beginning, I do understand what a difficult, difficult journey and struggle it is for you. And it's not your fault you have this disorder either. If you though can understand what it's like to be a child, or maybe you had a parent like this yourself, you can also maybe hold inside how powerful it can be to work on healing. We want to love our parents. And so even with the really boundaried one, when your parent starts to just make some shifts, if they will just try, it, it makes it so much more likely to keep a relationship. It's when you go in that cave again and again and again, and you come out bruised, that you can just walk away. And I know it hurts for, for everybody involved, but oftentimes it is a, basically a final act of protection because when we're children, we cannot protect ourselves, especially from our own parents. So thanks for watching, guys. Please stay safe and well, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.